What if I told you that groups of black people are roaming major American cities, attacking and killing all white people and women? Do you think I'd be overstating it a bit? Well, maybe I would, maybe I wouldn't be, if it weren't for stories like this. This is from Washington, D.C., a truly dangerous city. It's dangerous because, you know, it, that Washington, D.C. is a company town. It's run by black people who believe that there are too many black people in prison for no reason whatsoever. So we just got to give them some love, attention, a pat on the head, and then let them go with a promise to sin no more. And then we have a bunch of white people whose entire life is dedicated to being in denial, deceit, and delusion about the level of black criminality in their town. And so we come to this jogger now in D.C. She's just jogging in a nice part of town, the Northwest. Listen to all the people in this video, in this news story. Listen to how everybody is so desperate to convince themselves and everybody else they live in a safe town. Nothing like this ever happens. That's just one big fat lie. Check it out. Now to a developing story in the district where the search is on for suspects who stabbed a woman to death in a quiet neighborhood in Logan Circle. This happened right in front of a popular carryout restaurant at the corner of P and 11 Streets. News Force Justin Finch joins us live with new details about surveillance video that may hold clues about the people responsible. Justin? Erica Pat, that's right. I can tell you that many people this morning have been trying to put words to what happened here. They've said it was terrifying and that it was troubling. And looking around, there are remnants of what happened here last night. Blood spattered on the sidewalks here. And yes, there is surveillance video that we are not releasing at this time. I have seen it. I can tell you it shows this victim here stumbling inside of this Chinese restaurant trying to save her own life. The video to watch, it is gut-wrenching. It is also very graphic. And for those reasons, we are not showing it to you at this time. But from everyone we have spoken with, from the staff of this restaurant to police to passersby, everyone here in Logan Circle is outraged. 11th and P Streets, by most accounts, a busy but safe corner by day and night. A common crossing where something so uncommon, so unthinkable happened that not even those who witnessed it can believe it. I scared. I don't know what happened. And uh, I just tried to call police. This is the manager of the Asian American carryout restaurant. He asked that we not identify him. But he says he was working Tuesday night around 8 p.m. when that young woman stumbled inside, stabbed and bleeding and desperate for help. I see somebody scream. The green and uh, looking outside, one lady, like a face and a hair, all blurred. As strangers rushed in to respond, the man says he called 911 and medics got her to the hospital. But he says she didn't look good. We're told she died a short time later. Anybody scared? Anybody, they don't know what happened. Police say that woman appeared to have been jogging before she was attacked, stabbed in her upper body area. As a runner, it's pretty terrifying. You think running on lit streets that you'd be safe, but I mean, that's mind-boggling. Last night, investigators began looking for three men in connection. Outside that corner restaurant, cameras caught at least one man racing away. The restaurant owner points out one man running south on 11th Street. Neighbors are angry and they are concerned and say they're keeping their guards up. I'll certainly be a lot more vigilant, especially while, while these gentlemen are at large. Uh, but P Street's a great street, and it's a beautiful street. And, you know, I walk here every day, and, you know, it'll be that way after these guys are caught. And back live, we can tell you one thing neighbors say they refuse to do at this time is to hide. They will continue to live their lives. I do want to show you the flowers you are seeing here just behind us here at this restaurant. Those were brought by a passerby, a woman who says that she jogs in this area too. And she is just wondering, you know, what may have led to this attack. She says that could have easily have been her last night. And again, at this time, police now looking for three men in connection to this stabbing last night. We can tell you we're awaiting an update from police. 
that will give us more about their investigation so far because it is active and perhaps as well an identification of this young woman who collapsed here at this restaurant last night and later died. Why remains a mystery at this time. Okay, now let's move on down to Houston for a truly insane story. Maybe even worse than the story we just saw right here. In Houston, a group of 10 to 20 to 30 black people between the ages of 11 and 14 roamed the streets of Houston looking for old white people to do it. Why? Because that's how they get their kicks. It's not Colin talking, that's them talking. Here's a little bit of video of what, I'm, what we're talking about. They got this one guy, he's a... Uh, grandfatherly type. He's the guy who plays Santa Claus and all the Christmas parades. Well, he says all the kids need is a little bit of, he says all they need is a little bit of love and attention. Wow. And we just did a story the other night. A couple of black people, maybe more, broke into a house in Cleveland. 94-year-old white woman lived there, prim, proper. Doilies, lace curtains, the whole thing. Broke in and killed her and beat the hell out of the person that was living there with her. Colin? That's all anecdotal. It's not anecdotal. These stories illustrate the numbers that we already know. The numbers that are wildly out of proportion right now, but as bad as they are, they're even worse, worse than people say they are. Let's not forget that, that city officials all over the country, including Houston, including Cleveland, including and especially Washington, D.C., their big anti-crime kick now is to not arrest black people for committing crimes. They say we don't want to criminalize poverty. And besides, putting black people in prison causes crime. I don't know how that works, but that's what they say. We also have city officials saying, hey, we, you know, we're going to reduce the number of people that we arrest. We have every, and there are district attorneys that say every shooting in this, in a, in a big city now involves witness intimidation that also drives down the numbers. What about stitches for snitches? What about Bronx juries? This is stuff that's been going on for a while, 5, 10, 15 years. Finally, after they get these numbers down, artificially down, they look around and go, hey, Colin, what are you talking about? I had a troll say this the other day. Saying, Colin, what are you talking about? The crime numbers are down. I heard, I heard uh, Tucker Carlson say this. The crime rate's down. Of course the crime rate is down. That's a mathematical number. That's a statistic that's supposed to represent reality. But the reality is the numbers are down, but the crime is up because we're not capturing it in the not we're not capturing it in the numbers. And on and on it goes where it stops. Nobody knows Houston, Washington, D.C., where everybody's convinced themselves they're living in a little this truly dangerous, dark and, 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 and chocolate city. They've convinced themselves this is some kind of Valhalla. Some kind of sophisticated place where people walk around from coffee shops to restaurants and everybody gets along. That's why you can go out jogging at 8, 8.30, 9 o'clock at night if you're a single woman. You're not going to live your life in fear. No, you're going to live your life in stupidity. Because that's the best way not to make the best, not to, not to make the black kids angry. 